This is my WWE Great American Bash 2008 review. The opening matchup was the Fatal 4-Way match for the World Tag Team titles between the defending champions Sean Morris and The Miz versus Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder versus Jesse and Festus versus Finlay and Hornswoggle. And this was just, you know, a typical tag team match. You know, nothing really special between these two teams. Pretty short. Um, it it served its purpose. It did. The end of the match um, basically came out of nowhere. You saw Jesse and Festus in the ring. Um, Jesse was on the top rope. And then you just saw, I think it was, it was either Hawkins or Ryder. And they um, pulled him off the top rope and just basically slammed him down to the mat. And that was the end of it. And they became the new tag team champions. You saw they average tag match, you know, nothing special to open the show with, um, you know, about two and one-fourth star match, you know, not that good of an opener, and then the um, next matchup was for the U.S. heavyweight title between uh, Matt Hardy versus Shelton Benjamin, this was a match I was looking forward to a lot, but um, it might just be me, but it was really, really sloppy, Shelton Benjamin was very, very fucking sloppy in this match, and this is coming from someone that's a huge fan of him, and you know, these two, for some reason, didn't gel as well as they should have. It didn't come off as good as what it should have. Um, Shelton Benjamin kept fucking up um, a couple maneuvers, the submission holds in this match. So it should have been a whole lot better than what it was. Um, Shelton Benjamin does pick up the victory, so hopefully they start doing something with him. But a two-star match should have been a whole, whole lot better. Then the next matchup was for the ECW title between Mark Henry versus Tommy Dreamer. And this was, you know, another one of those matches on this pay-per-view that was a little lackluster. See, I don't think they should have had these three matches in a, in a row. They should have had something in place of at least, um, they should have at least put something in place of the U.S. title match or some, or, or put this match on a little later on, but because this match didn't live up, wasn't that good at all, you know, wasn't enjoyable, um, Obviously, since it was um, pay-per-view was done in New York, the crowd was into Tommy Dream. You heard some um, "Let's Go Tommy" chants, um, but you know, not a good match at all. Mark Henry as champion is just a complete joke. You know, WWE is just keeping this title on him to keep it um, hush hush about the whole racial issue between him and Michael Hayes. So you know, they're just going to keep hold, letting him hold this title for a little bit. Um, not an enjoyable match. Um, match ends when. Um, Colin Delaney turns on Tommy Dreamer, which we all knew was going to come at some point. We just didn't know if it was going to happen quite yet. So it happened on this pay-per-view, but instead of uh, Cody, um, Colin Delaney joining up with um, joining up with Mark Henry after the match, you just see him walk away. So I guess this is going to lead to a feud between them two. So don't know what what they're going to do with Matt with uh, Mark Henry as champion right now. Who's his next challenger going to be? A match about one and three, one and three four stars at best. wasn't enjoyable at all. Didn't find anything good about it. And uh, the next match up was the match, probably easily I would say the match of the night. Um, some people might not like the end of the match, but I thought it was a very good match. And that was John, uh, that was Chris Jericho versus Shawn Michaels. This was a very good match. What you would expect from these two. Some people might not like the methodical style of this match. It was um, a lot of methodical stuff in this match. It's also good in-ring psychology with Jericho working over the ribs in this match, working over Shawn Michaels, um, you know, historical, you know, broken back, you know, everyone knows about. So he worked over his back a lot during this match. Um, later on in the match, you saw Lance K get involved in this match. He tried to, to come out here and help Jericho. You saw um, Shawn Michaels do a moonsault from the top rope to the floor to Sean, uh, to Chris Jericho and Lance Cade. And um, during that part of the match, you saw um, both um, Jericho and Shawn Michaels about to go back in the ring. I think Shawn was about to you know, push Jericho into the ring. You saw Jericho hit Shawn Michaels and elbow him into um, Shawn Michaels' injured eye. Then you saw Shawn Michaels get in the ring. He was busted open. So, you know, you saw Jericho go after the eye. Um, lot, uh, a lot of good stuff in this match. I enjoyed it. You know, it was a different type of match between these two, but it worked out. And, um, you know, with the excessive blood that Shawn Michaels was um, losing, you knew at some point this match was going to end by referee stoppage, which it did. So Jericho picks up the victory by referee stoppage. And I would say even with that type of ending and, you know, the stuff they did in this match, I would say, you know, three and a half stars. I really found this match enjoyable. There was stuff I liked in it a whole lot. 
and I would probably say easily the match of the night, and you kind of can tell with that rating if that's the match of the night this pay-per-view was. Pretty lackluster, to, to say the least. And um, the next match up was for the Divas title between Michelle McCool versus um, Natty Neidhart for the Divas title. And this was the first time I actually saw the Divas title, so I definitely got to agree with everyone now that, yeah, that fucking title looks... Um, very ugly, but it, it fits for it being the Divas title, and it fits for the look since it's a women's title, so it makes sense in that case. Um, this match was pretty short, nothing really that good in here. Um, I thought Natty Neidhart possibly could have pulled off a very good match between these between these two. Michelle McCool, you saw them um, during this match, you saw Natty Neidhart try to put her in the sharpshooter. Her um, Then you saw Michelle McCool reverse it a few times into a heel hook. Um, nothing really enjoyable in this match. Should have been a whole lot better women's match than what it was. So I guess this is going to show that the Divas title is not going to be that good. And Michelle McCool picks up the victory after um, Natty Neihart taps out the heel hook in about a two-star match. Then the um, af then after this match, you see Jericho come out here. He cuts a little promo, heelish promo, and I guess he says, you know, the doctor said Shawn Michaels is um, injured, and I guess he. Um, Tore his retina in this in, in the match, so I guess that's going to lead up to something else between Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho, probably at SummerSlam, some type of match between the two, probably like a no DQ match or something on the line, so that falls count anywhere or something like that. Then the uh, next match up was Batista versus CM Punk for the world title. And the thing I got to say about this match, this match was building up to something good. These two were working very good with each other. You know, this match was. Looked very good up until the ending. I gotta say, before I talk about the match, the end of the match comes when Kane comes out here, interferes, and it ends in a no contest. CM Punk is still the world champion, which is the good thing that comes out of this. They are still running with CM Punk as champion, but it's not really the greatest thing since, I mean, he's looking very weak as champion. He, you know, pretty much hasn't defeated anyone credible. You know, JBL, he ha had to have help with, um, Crime time and Cena distracting him. He uh, defeated um, Snitsky. No one, you know, that's not credible. He couldn't beat Kane, and then this happens. So, you know, if they're running with it, him as a champion for a little while, hopefully they go a little longer and do good, something good. Hopefully, maybe we'll see a um, John Cena versus CM Punk match, which could be good. This match was building up something good. These two were working very good with each other. You know, saw Batista be pretty dominant during this match. You saw CM Punk get into um, his um, ki his hard kicks in this match. You know, these two were working very good, and this was building up to a good match. Um, the ending of it pretty much really hurt this match. I would have preferred if they didn't want CM Punk to, you know, win this match by pinfall. They could have ended it with, you know, a count out or something other than Kane. But it does look like something good, you know, for Kane fans, you know, looks like they're going to be starting doing something big with Kane, especially him getting involved in, in a world title match on a pay-per-view. So they're going to be building up something here, maybe, I don't know, a CM Punk versus Kane match at SummerSlam, something like that. You know, this match was, you know, easily going to be building up to what it looked like, you know, if it had a decisive finish, maybe, you know, a four-star match. Um, there was some good stuff in here I did enjoy, so I would rate it, you know, even with the finish, three and one-fourth stars, but it did kind of hurt it a little, almost thought about giving three stars, three and one-fourth, because you did saw some good uh, back-and-forth action with the two for the time they were given. Then the next matchup was John Cena versus JBL in the New York City parking lot brawl. And this match is from start to finish, spelled out, this should have been a match on free TV. This was a waste of space being on pay-per-view. It wasn't enjoyable at all. Um, only thing that might have been enjoyable is the ending sequence when JBL was about to look like he was getting F-U'd from the stage onto the car, and Cena, um, Cena, uh, JBL reversed it and threw Cena into the car, and you saw Cena get his arm busted open. So that was the only spot in this match. You saw some cheesy stuff. You saw um, JBL try to light a car on fire that Cena was in. And, you know, nothing really good in this match. I'm not even going to give this a star rating because it wasn't even good at all. You know, nothing enjoyable. You know, a waste of space being on pay-per-view. Then the world title match between Edge versus Triple H was up, the main event of the night. Um, this match didn't live up to what it should have been. should have been a whole lot better between these two. 
thought these two could have put on actually a very good match. Um, the end of this match, you thought maybe they would go on a route of some type of swerve. They had um, the wedding planner, I can't remember her name at this time, come out there, try to help Edge, grab the title belt, try to hand it to Edge, and you see Vicky Guerrero come out there, attack her. Then, you know, Vicky Guerrero tries to attack, hit Edge with the belt, Edge spears her, and then Edge turns around and, you know, looks like, what the fuck did I just do? And then he gets pedigreed by Triple H, so Triple H is still the world champion, and, you know, a main event that should have been a whole lot better, you know, three stars at best, you know, it was some decent stuff in it, but I thought them two could have put on a whole lot better than match than what it was, so overall, as you can tell, this is not a pay-per-view I would recommend, you know, at the, at the best, I'll probably give this a 6 out of 10, you know, probably one of WWE's weakest pay-per-views of this year, so it just